rise to um, particular mechanical properties required for a good cricket bat. If you know cricketers, they're obsessed with, with cricket bats. So to be here today to contribute in some way to, to maybe make a better cricket bat, I, I think I'm the envy of every cricket player in the world at the moment. Each cell is um, encased, surrounded by a membrane of fibres and cellulose. And these fibres um, are, are kind of intertwined and they create lots of cells that are filled with air. And the membrane of these cells, they have to be just right, not too weak, not too strong. So when the cricket ball hits the surface of a cricket bat, the cells deform enough to spring back to original shape so the ball can basically bounce back the surface. We think we know a lot about uh, um, why a cricket bat works. Um, and now it would be great to, to see the, the science behind actually what makes a great cricket bat. Using the tomography facility in Applied Maths, um, we are able to extract the 3D structure. So essentially it's a three-dimensional microscope that can blow out the, um, the tiny little features as small as one, two micron. You can actually fly through this beautiful structure, the labyrinth of complex patterns and structures and connected or disconnected um, features inside the, the material. I'm very interested to see what the end result is with the difference between cashmere willow and, and, and the top grade English willow is, is why, why the players' bats are, are so much different. Um, and if you could squeeze in um, the, the good and the bad from there, uh, I think the possibilities are endless. If we find a good alternative for the English willow, hopefully we will be able to produce good quality, maybe even uh, test grade bats at a real cheap price. Every boy and girl will be able to um, to use top quality